Hello and welcome to all the Palm Springs Film Festival Society members. My name is Jane Shuttle. I'm one of the festival programmers. And it's great pleasure for me to be able to host this conversation today with the creative team from the wonderful new film, Cherry. I'd like to introduce everybody who's with us here on the virtual stage. Um, first, the co-screenwriters in alphabetical order, Jessica Goldberg and Angela Russo Ottstadt. And of course, our co-directors, Anthony Russo and Joe Russo. Thanks everyone for making the time to be with us and talk with us today. Thank you, Jen. Um, and I'd like to congratulate you all uh, sincerely on, on a wonderful film. Um, there's so much to talk about here that I'd just like to leap right in. And because I think um, we can acknowledge that things begin with a script, I'd like to begin with our co-screenwriters. The first question is a very simple one that I wanted to ask the two of you was whether or not you had ever worked together before. We had, <clears throat> yeah, we had been, the reason sort of this movie came up is we were working, the four of us actually, on another movie um, and, uh, and, uh, this, 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 the, the, the brothers, the family got this book. So <laughs> I was very lucky to be included in, um, in working on it. So you had established um, methods of working together before, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'd like to ask the screenwriters, I mean, um, Nico Walker's novel was a uh, created quite a splash when it came out. And it's a very sprawling, textured, rich novel. Can I ask you how you approached adapting something like this from the screen? Did you begin thematically or from character or I won't even begin to presume how screenwriters tackle something like this, but could you speak a bit about your process? You wanna start, Ange? Sure, I think, you know, the first step was um, you know, the, the book is so remarkable and for so many reasons. And, um, you know, one of which is most notably the voice of the narrator, Nico Walker's, uh, you know, writing itself and, and just the candor and even the humor that he uh, describes these experiences with. That said, the book is um, a collection of experiences. You know, the narrator is involved in sort of an existential exercise and doesn't quite travel the distance that you know, we might want a character to in the context of, of a film narrative. So our first step was to, you know, identify what that film structure looked and felt like. And we chose to, um, you know, define that box by the love story uh, because it felt to us that Cherry's love for Emily and, and her love for him as well was the constant and, and the life preserver that would keep Cherry afloat mm -hmm. through all of these differing experiences that he has. And I think once we felt comfortable with that structure, then we went back to the book and we really um, spent a lot of time, you know, picking and choosing the pros and the moments that really popped for us the first time that we read it, the characters, bits and pieces of different characters. And, and we say it was a bit like a science experiment of sort of taking these things and putting them together and, and weaving them in a way that accomplishes what Nico Walker did so well in the book, which is to, to stir a sense of empathy, you know, for, for this character and the experiences that he's going through, no matter how difficult those experiences might be to embrace. Um, and also, you know, no matter how difficult some of his decisions might be to embrace. And so that was our next step was really walking through the script from the character's perspective, we call him Cherry. Um, and, you know, making sure that we were constantly honoring the way in which he sees the world at any given time. And as he travels further through his journey, the way he sees the world shifts and it shifts quite dramatically. And that's where we made some of the more stylistic choices in terms of, you know, uh, playing with tone and genre, um, really honoring where he sat at each particular moment, you know, from college to basic training and then going to Iraq and then coming home, you know, with PTSD and beyond. Um, so that was just sort of, you know, I think sequentially the process that, that we took. 
It's really interesting. There are so many um, wonderful lines of dialogue in the film. One of the most prominent to me was right near the beginning, where in the character's uh, voiceover, he says, sometimes I think life was wasted on me. And um, I thought tonally that the film is lyrical without being pretentious, <laughs> if that makes sense. And that there's a a spare kind of elegance around the script that there's so much room for the characters still to breathe. And I would imagine this must have been quite challenging when you have a very vibrant novel, a very textured novel. Um, and that's where I wondered about how you um, just kept it so personal and yet it felt like it was also about bigger things. Does that make a little bit of sense? We still feel like we're always with him, but he is almost traveling through time. Uh, it's, you know, it's over the course of 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe speak a little bit to how you still keep that personal voice so clear? Um, I mean, I, thank you. That's so nicely said. I think that's so true about the movie. That, like Anne said, that it is like a, the, the writer's voice was so poetic in this book and retaining that voice and doing justice to that voice was really important to us because you're right, like the book is full of these larger social themes that are just like candy for a writer. Like, we, you know, who, you know, we <laughs> want to write about the opioid crisis and war. And, but then I think that's why the love story became so important to us because it just became this frame that as long as you could get back to that, you were really tracking the heart and soul of this man because he's funny and he looks at the world in such a brutal way. Um, but in the end, it's like, a, it's devastatingly heartbreaking. I mean, the end of the movie yeah. is, is brutal. Um, so, you know, it's like, how do you keep that voice alive? And, and I, I'm so like, there were so many lines that we were able to pull from the book in some of that narration. Um, and it was just picking and choosing. They don't, they didn't leap out as misplaced or popping out. It just seemed, I kept going back and thinking, oh, I th that's so resonant. Mm -hmm. It's, I just really want to commend you on those choices. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd like to move over and speak um, to our co-directors, uh, Anthony and Joe, congratulations also to you. I wondered, the most um, first question that popped to my mind was about um, working with Tom Holland. You had obviously worked with him on very large movies before. Um, did you think of him when the novel came to you or were you looking for a piece of material to work together with him? It's a sort of a chicken and an egg question, I guess. It is a little bit of the chicken and the egg. I mean, he is a, a dear friend of ours. Um, uh, you know, we've worked with him for you know, seven or eight years now. Uh, and he's tremendously talented. Um, yeah. We, I think that we didn't really, he was the first person we thought of for the role uh, because as we read the book, our immediate instinct was, this is a challenging character who makes some self-destructive choices. And it's critically important uh, if you're gonna convert something like that into a movie that you have an empathetic lead actor uh, and someone charismatic that you will go on that journey with because what'll happen when you're dealing with intense issues like this is the audience will intellectualize the movie and they'll remove themselves from it because it's, it's so intense. Mm -hmm. And if the lead character is also potentially unlikable or you know, it, it, at least it, it creates a conflict in your mind about whether you like them or not, you're gonna remain in that intellectual space. But someone with Tom's warmth and genuine humanity I think keeps it an emotional experience for the audience. They want to root for him. They want to see him do well. They forgive him when he makes bad choices. Uh, and, and you know they want to see him come out the other side. And that was critically important because the movie ultimately is about empathy. This is a film about trauma and it's trying to understand why people are self-medicating in this, in, in sort of our, our very modern technology driven world. What is it? that is leading to this sense of fatalism, this existential blight, this lack of forward momentum for them. Uh, and, uh, you know, look, we've all been traumatized. We've been traumatized by our government. We've been traumatized by, uh, you know, the pandemic. Um, and the only way I think that we move forward is through empathy. And that's ultimately why this is, a, this is an optimistic and hopeful film. 
Um, I that was partly this is a perfect segue to what was the, is my second question, which is that this feels like a film very uniquely for this time of its time, even though I imagine and I know that it's been several years in the making and it just seems very, very timely. Can you go back to the beginning of your process and speak about um, your attraction for the material? Is it about these issues um, that you've just spoken about so well, that, em that need for empathy? Yes, the need for empathy. And I think you, you also put your finger on the uh, timeliness is a big issue for us. You know, we've been, we don't have any direct military experience ourselves, but we've been, we've made a study of the war experience throughout our lives, whether through literature, or journalism, film, et cetera. And it felt like this book had a very unique and distinct experience of warfare that was specific mm -hmm. to the psychology of the current generation, sort of the post 9-11 generation. And that mm -hmm. was really exciting to us to see it through fresh eyes again and it through a fresh perspective. And that was very compelling. And um, yeah. also it felt like it was also a, br a, a brand new experience of drug use and drug abuse. You know, that was the opioid epidemic, I think is very different than previous ways, waves of drug use and drug abuse. And I think that was also very exciting to us because it hadn't been thoroughly examined yet. At least we hadn't felt like it had been thoroughly examined yet. Also, we felt like the opioid crisis is still ongoing. You know, this past year during the pandemic, the highest overdose from opioids yet of any year. So mm -hmm. the fact that it's still happening, like all those things contributed to, the, to this idea that like, this is a worthy movie to make. And this is an important movie to make right now because the experience of these things is ongoing. And um, perhaps the movie can participate in that experience on some level for some people. Um, Jessica mentioned that um, the ending of the film is quite devastating, and uh, but the very last shot or the very last scenes of it, I you know after he emerges, and then he sees her there, I found incredible. It felt optimistic, it felt uplifting, like these two people that there was a path forward. They'd been through hell and back together, and yet they were still together. Was that one of the things you wanted us to take away from that? It's that we can do this? Without question. I mean, I think that the, it, it is a very modern love story. This is, this is a story about two people in their youth who make two what they think are very simple decisions uh, that they don't really have the life experience to make. And those decisions lead to a loss of 15 years of their life, right? And it, this, it, this movie was engineered for Gen Z. They're the ones we're most worried about. They're the ones who are on the front lines of, uh, of this battle with the opioid crisis. We, put, uh, 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 we have put young family members in the ground. So this is a very personal movie for us because of their addiction. We have others who are struggling with addiction. Uh, and so we're acutely aware of how, you know, these pills that are scientifically engineered to make you addicted to them. The one, the, the one time you put it in your mouth could take you decades of your life to, to alter that decision that you made. And, and so the movie is engineered towards Gen Z. Uh, it's engineered visually in a way to appeal to them. Uh, they have a, you know, I've got four kids and it's unique. That, that generation I think is more visually advanced than any generation in history. They consume content visually in a way that no generation ever has. Technology is pushing them farther and faster uh, and advancing them farther and faster. They, you know, the way that they consume it, they get very segregated information in very short bites. It's very quick. You know, I watch my kids on TikTok moving through, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, a recipe to sports to, you know, all within like, you know, five minutes. So their, their ability to consume information far exceeds ours. They need denser information in order to hold their attention. Uh, and so there's a stylistic approach to the movie that is meant to appeal to them and keep them vested in it to get to the end of this film, which as you, you say, has an optimistic point of view. You can recover from the choice. 
you know, and, and, and it requires, you know, personal um, um, scrutiny, self-awareness and uh, discipline to get through it, but you can recover. And that's ultimately what the movie's about. And I might add to that, just even on the most basic level, you know, that it, it, it very much felt to us that if we're going to bring an audience through this journey, at the end of it, you know, hopefully this story, this representation of these characters and the humanity of them will inspire some dialogue, right? And in order to have a larger dialogue about these problems and these issues, it feels like we need to live in a place of hope. And um, so we knew very early on that that's where the movie would end. And we knew that all of it rested on the shoulders of a look, you know, in the screenplay, <laughs> it's there. And so, you know, yeah. very much to Tom and Sierra's credit, I remember the first day that I saw the dailies come in for that moment and it's just astounding. And it really carried that entire journey, you know, to, to that place. And as Joe said, it's, it's a place of healing you know, that, that you can recover and you can move forward. I agree. I felt like my chest lifted when I saw it and I thought, oh, and uh, you know, I felt that I was able to leave the screening of the film and just think about it in a more, uh, a deeper, more nuanced, nuanced way, all of the story, because I had been left with this feeling of optimism, as I say. I'd like to go back um, just a little bit and talk about the character's path through all of these difficulties. As you say, this Gen Z um, trying to speak to them because it's clear throughout the film that um, the responsibility does lie with our two lead characters for their particular struggles. They get support from family, they get support from the VA, they get support all around them, but they, until they decide, each one of them and individually, and it has to be individually, um, nothing moves forward and neither of them heals. They don't heal together. They can come together at the end. And I thought, this was so perfectly portrayed without hitting us over the head that it really does come down to your decision. And I just wanted to say thank you for weaving that in that way through the story, that it's their individual choice. I mean, the sadness too is that the lead character, Cherry, has to make a decision to put himself in jail, to remove himself yeah. from the circumstance, the destructive circumstances of his life in order to find peace. And he spends 10 years there recovering. And, you know, it, it is a series of sort of tragic circumstances. I mean, these are two people, one decides I can't, I can't fall in love with someone because uh, I, I have trauma and I, you know, and I don't know how to fall in love with them. And the other's response to that is, well, I'm gonna join the army. And those two decisions, you know, lead to a, 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 a you know, a daisy chain of, of events that, you know, ultimately end up with him in prison seeking treatment. And it's not until he's there for some time that he has an epiphany where he understands, you know, uh, how to center himself and move forward again. And so there's a Zhivago like tragedy, uh, um, you know, where fate conspires uh, um, to, uh, to, to complicate their lives. But you're, you're so right in saying that, you know, this is, it's ultimately incumbent upon them as individuals to um, to uh, to either advance or, or die. I, I did feel also too that there were moments of great harmony in the film and perhaps it was me endowing onto it. But for instance, towards the end when he surrenders to the police in a quite dramatic way, um, I felt when he sits down and he undoes his shoes, that's so much like the scene from boot camp, where he takes his shoes off, where he takes his socks off, divests himself and things. And I thought one big epic decision is echoed by another big epic decision. And there were just all these lovely moments throughout the film where those, do they just emerge in a way? Or was this in consultation with Tom? Or can you speak a bit? about um, these lovely moments of harmony where one part of the story echoes another part? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, go ahead. Okay. No, go ahead, Anne. I was just going to say that, uh, you know, it, 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 it evolves. You know, Joe and I have a very organic uh, process of making films. You know, there's this adage that we often cite, this filmmaking adage that says, 
you make a movie three times over when you write it, <laughs> shoot it, and when you edit it. And okay. we're big believers in that, uh, that there is sort of possibilities for reinvention in all of those parts of the process. And so beginning with Jessica and Angela, you know, we sort of begin that creative exploration of what the movie can be. We continue that with all the collaborators that come together during production. The actors, certainly Tom was a very, you know, because the character, because this movie is entirely through Cherry's point of view, Tom was a, 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 even more essential collaborator than a lead actor normally is um, because the movie leans so heavily on that character. Um, but also Sierra Bravo and the other actors, but also our, you know, our entire creative team. Um, you know, Joe and I, like, simply by the fact that we work as a team, you know, it speaks to the fact that we love the process of collaboration. We value it really highly. So our, our entire process uh, is, is based on collaboration through all of our cinematographer, our costume designer, et cetera, production designer, and then all the way through post as well. And we will revisit with Angela and Jessica you know, throughout that entire process, throughout shooting, throughout the po and throughout editing as well. Um, so it's very much, you know, the answer is it can be found anywhere, and it's it's being built from day one, but it's constantly changing and morphing as you go through the entire process. Sorry, Ange, did you want to add any more? No, yeah, I think that that's yes. That the answer is yes. Like we were very aware of you know the the crossover when when building the story, you know, even, even small things from when he's first disrupted in, in the campus, you know, taking his headphones off when he meets Emily. And then at the end, in the epiphany moment, as Joe said, like those little touch points, you know, like leaving those and making sure they're there. And certainly one institution echoes the other institution and his experience in basic, you know, is very similar to, you know, what we're seeing in prison. So we were certainly cognizant of all of that and purposefully building it. But as Anthony said, it's, it's such a, beautiful, wonderful process of, you know, many creative voices coming together and maybe they pick up on some of those seeds that were there and then the idea builds even more and even more and, and obviously through Anthony and Joe's execution, you know, it, it, it comes to um, something that leaves an impact as you noted, so. I think the richness um, and the, is shown in every moment on the screen. So it's a great testament to the teamwork that you have together. Um, while I have you, Angela, I wanted to know, um, now the circumstances of the novelist, uh, Nico Walker are a bit unique mm -hmm. in that um, he's not at liberty as far as I know currently right now. Do you, are you in much um, communication with him? Will there be a chance for him to see the film? in the foreseeable future. Do you know anything about that? Yes, um, you, you know, when we began, um, Nico was in prison. We, we Jessica had some um, interaction with him early on and he was very helpful and gave us some places to visit. One of the first things Jessica and I did was get on a plane and go to Cleveland and I showed her around oh. you know, being from there. And um, and we went to many places that, that Nico had pointed out for us to, to visit. Um, and then um, now though, he, he is finished um, serving and, and so he has seen the movie and oh. which is great, yeah. Um, it's, it's, such a, it's, it's such an interesting thing. We were just talking about this yesterday, you know, you come into this as a writer adapting somebody else's work and you're coming to the table with nothing but, you know, love and, and celebration for what spoke to you, you know, about the work and made you want to you know, so desperately to, to adapt it um, into another media. And um, so it's a tricky thing because it was so important to Jessica and I to honor the spirit of the book, uh, even though changes were made, uh, you know, on a plot level um, in certain places, we just really, every decision we made came from, you know, that, that compass of wanting to capture what was so special about the novel itself and what's so special about Nico Walker's voice. So, so certainly, you know, his, his imprint was all over our process and, and it was very important to us. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, just before I wrap up, um, I just again um, wanted to go back and touch on these, this idea of the big issues that are involved in this film. Um, for me as a viewer, it was very much about um, things we discussed 
on a basic level, the opioid level, but it's also the opioid crisis, excuse me, and um, but also very much about personal choices, about identity, society, war, metaphorical and otherwise. And I wonder, um, is there one particular thing you would like viewers to take away from it? Or I'll, I'll just leave that question there. That's a great question. Uh... And I think I touched on it earlier. There is a combination, there's a confluence of, um, of issues facing us, I think, as a country and also as, as, as humans. And it has to do with technology and social media and distancing and otherizing and, and toxicity. And, you know, the, this movie really is, and, and I think it started post 9 11. That's an, and, and we were, I think, all blown away equally by. Nico's ability to capture the fatalism of, uh, you know, of this character's voice, this sort of self-loathing and self-awareness. Uh, and, and we're all stuck in a bit of an echo chamber. And I think um, the, the, you know, the issues of the film are really about, you know, self-medicating to escape um, modern problems. Uh, and, uh, and so if there's anything we wanted to leave the audience with is that, uh, that these issues exist, you know, and, and they can be interpreted however you want to interpret them more, um, you know, disassociation, um, um, you know, and, uh, and so ultimately the, the uh, you know, the only way we survive this is I think together with empathy as a community. Uh, and if we, um, uh, if, if we forego that or if we ignore it, uh, um, we're, we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And I think that the last uh, few years have really been a, a signifier of what kind of trouble we could be in. I think those are wonderful words for us to take away. Um, you've given us a lot to think about. I want to congratulate you all again on what I think is a really important film, a really compelling film. Thank you very much for everything that you've done to create it. And um, I hope these words are heard and all the best to all of us going forward. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. We yeah. really, really appreciate all your thoughts on the movie. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks a lot. I'm sure you'll be hearing more. All good stuff. Thanks, everyone. Okay, Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.